After working in computer repair for almost 10 years now, I've bought and tested a ton of tools over the years. However, the ones I have here laid out are some of my absolute favorites, and let me go ahead and share some of them with you. First up, when it comes to a screwdriver, it's probably gonna be your most used tool out of anything, and the screwdriver I'm currently using, especially for on the go, is the LTT screwdriver. I absolutely love it. I've been using a lot of ratcheting screwdrivers. I probably own eight different ones, but this has been my absolute favorite for working on computers. It's a great ratcheting mechanism. It's also got a great knurling, which makes things really nice for moving quick. And I do love the bit storage, which is pretty convenient, especially when you're on the go, which I am quite a bit. But when it comes to my absolute favorite screwdriver for when I'm in the shop, I use an electric screwdriver. Um, I use this gyro model from DeWalt and uh, I absolutely love it. It's kind of cool because basically when you pull the trigger, it just starts it, but it doesn't start spinning until you actually tilt in whatever direction you want to go. And it, depending on how much you tilt, it actually speeds up or slows down accordingly. I also have a little extension on here uh, with a PH2 bit. It's pretty much what lives on it all day. Uh, but this extension does two things. First, it adds a little bit extra length, making it easier to reach into some of the tighter spots when working on computers, as well as if you actually extend it, this allows you to hold a screw that's a little bit longer, which can be helpful, especially when you're trying to put stuff together or trying to get um, into a tight spot and you don't want it to fall off, despite this being magnet. Speaking of screwdrivers and bits, one of my absolute favorite kits is the Manta Kit from iFixit. I've been using this for a really long time and I absolutely love it. It comes with two different drivers as well as a ton of bits. I think it's 120 in total and it has everything that you could possibly need when working in IT. Everything from very specific Apple bits, um, they have their like Pinsa bits that are um, you don't really find anywhere else. You're not going to buy them from a lot of retailers. Um, and then you have everything from square bits to Torx bits to tri bits, all kinds of different things in between, both for the eighth inch as well as the quarter inch adapters uh, for these two different drivers or pretty much any standard uh, interchangeable model. That will pretty much work with it. I absolutely love it. This is going to give you covered for pretty much anything working in IT. I also like that the top of it can actually be used as screw storage. It's got some little slots. I use this all the time when I just need a quick place to you know, throw some screws. Use this quite often. And uh, if we continue on, another iFixit item that I owned forever basically. Um, I had the original iFixit ProTech Toolkit a long time ago. That was the old gray one. But this is the new one. Uh, this came out a couple years ago uh, and I absolutely love it. So basically it's got everything that you need pretty much for basic, uh, pretty much laptop repairs, phone repairs. Uh, when it comes to desktop repairs, you need a little bit of a larger driver, but this handles quite a bit. So it's got a bunch of different uh, Jimmy tools, uh, prying tools, uh, little picks, uh, you got a suction cup, and then you also have a 64 bit driver kit, which I absolutely love because it has a flexible extension. This is actually pretty cool. This basically is actually flexible and this allows you to get into some really tight spots, which can be very helpful in some circumstances. So it's definitely an item I use quite often and this pretty much lives in my backpack for anywhere I go on the go. So um, speaking of iFixit, I also have a bunch of extra prying tools. I leave these ones in my shop. So I got some, um, they're prying tools, which are basically designed to break before your devices. They're a little more malleable, which is kind of nice to see. Um, you know, it is something that's not gonna last forever, but that's why I buy a bunch of them and use them while I can. And then this is just one of uh, their spudger tools. This thing is so handy for basically getting into very tight spaces, especially when working on laptops and removing things like ribbon cables. Another iFix item I use all the time happens to be this set of tweezers. These are really nice, especially when I was just talking with the spudger, being able to get into some tight spaces. I use these angled ones, they're super sharp, but they're also very accurate, which are great for when you're trying to undo like something like a ribbon cable, use these all the time, pretty much every day. Uh, you always need tweezers when working in IT, so I always use that as well. And when it comes to taking things apart, you need a way to keep track of your screws. Um, although you can use like the lid of something like the uh, Manta or even the lid of the one inside of your ProTec toolkit, I really like this uh, mat that they sell. This is basically a dry erase mat that's also magnetic. So you can go ahead and keep track. And I usually like to work in like a chronological order as I keep track of the screws while I take the system apart. And this is actually pretty helpful because when you're working on a computer, especially something like a laptop, you can easily go through 50 different screws and some very small parts, which make it very easy to go ahead and keep track of everything when you have it laid it out and actually mark everything up. 
helps going on. Now let's go ahead and move into like a different section of tools. So we have things basically to get things open and cut things apart. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about scissors. You need a good pair of scissors when working in computer repair. And I absolutely love the electrician scissors from Klein. These are some of the best ones that are out there on the market. Um, they are just super smooth and I absolutely love uh, using them all the time. They basically uh, can cut through pretty much any kind of cable that you need to and just cutting anything apart when working in you know, computer repair, even things like zip ties. Uh, sometimes you gotta get something a little sharper than some kind of pair of like side cutters or wire cutters. So that's kind of why I always keep these on hand, I use them all the time and they just feel indestructible. I think that's my second pair, but the first pair still works. Next up, we also got a pair of wire cutters. As I said, zip ties are super popular when it comes to PC building, as well as working in pretty much any sector of IT. So I just actually have a pretty cheap pair. This is from a company called CHP, um, and they're nothing special. I've had them forever. They you know, don't really go bad. Uh, they're still sharp enough to be able to cut through um, any kind of zip tie that I come across, and uh, I use them pretty much every day. And uh, you know, there's something that's just super common when working in you know, computer repair. Another thing that's always ha handy to have is some kind of blade. Uh, this one in particular is for basically a box cutter. I like using this one. This is a Gerber model. It folds up in a really nice convenient package, which is easy to like slip in your pocket, especially when you're on the go. You gotta open a bunch of boxes. This thing, super helpful. Now when it comes to one of my least used items, but when I do use it, it means probably the most to me, are these VAM pliers. These are the best pliers that basically money can buy. See, what makes them so special is the fact that not only are they built incredibly well, it's actually how the teeth are at the end. The ends of the teeth are actually designed to grip the head of a screw. And what happens is, if you get a screw and you bite down on it with the actual VAM pliers, this is basically the head is exposed, you can then basically squeeze it it will bite into that screw. They basically destroys the screw a little bit, but what it does, this allows you to actually crank it out if you strip the head on a screw. It saved me so many times. Um, you know, and there's two different models. You know, you have something for like the larger screws when working on desktops, and then on laptops, they got a little smaller pair, which is designed for you know the smaller screws, so it's got a little bit of a smaller head uh, that it's designed for. And I'm gonna say those saved me so many times. I'm working in you know just different systems especially when i get old computers that have been worked on time and time again eventually the screws wear out and they just strip and the only way to get them out is something like this we're basically cutting them this is a way more effective way and i've tried regular pliers they don't work nearly as well as something like the band pliers now let's move on to testing tools see there's a lot of different testing tools out there on the market however when it comes to my you know favorites were the ones i probably use the most I'd probably start off with a multimeter. This is definitely one of the most used items in my shop. Use this pretty much anytime I'm going to check voltage through a laptop or even a desktop. But really for laptops, what I like to check is the power flow. So I check the power from the charger to the charge port to, to the motherboard and then from the motherboard to the battery. And basically I can trace every single thing with the multimeter. It's pretty easy and simple to use. This is a really basic one, it's nothing fancy but it's worked for me for the past couple of years and um, you know, I haven't had to replace it just yet. Now, another little tester that's probably, you know, not something that most technicians keep on hand, but I've absolutely loved is this battery tester. And I don't really use it for traditional batteries. I actually use it for button style batteries or basically CMOS batteries, because what this has is a little section for putting in your CMOS battery. You put it in place, close it down, and it'll actually give you a reading for your button battery, which will tell you if it's in good health or not, which is a great indication if something's happening like bio settings are being reset. It's a pretty good indication that you got an issue with your CMOS battery, but this will allow you to go ahead and verify it, that's what's going on. So I like having uh, that on hand. I use it quite often um, and I absolutely love it. It's a really cheap product to add to your um, you know, tool set. Next up is another tester. This one is probably my favorite. This is Thermaltake's Dr. Power 2. And it's a very simple device, but it's very effective. See, this is a power supply tester, which basically you can plug in any standard ATX power supply into the um, system. Basically, you can plug in your 24 pin, your 8 pin uh, PCIe, as well as your 8 pin CPU, your SATA, as well as a Molex. Whatever you feel like may need to be tested. And then what you can do is power on that power supply without any other components being connected. This allows you to verify if maybe you have a bad power supply 
or if the power supply is sending the incorrect voltage, as that will also read out on the screen, which is super convenient to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, this has helped me diagnose so many different like weird issues with power, and it's a really fast way to just verify, okay, we got a bad power supply immediately without having to plug in a spare. I can basically plug in a 24 pin, try to power it up. If we get no response, or if we get a failed response um, on the power supply tester, it's a very good indication that's exactly what's going on. So I absolutely love this product. And there's actually a Dr. Power 3 coming out. Should be out close to the time that this video is released. Or if not, it's coming soon as I did see it at CES. And it's a really cool product that I can't wait for because they're gonna add support for the 12 pin connector. So that's something I'm looking forward to as well. Now, when it comes to data, something that is very common is basically people have a lot of computers that either have stopped working bad motherboards, um, the hardware around it doesn't make sense fixing, or they need to basically extract data. So one of the things that ways I'm able to do that is a drive dock. This one is from StarTech. And it's probably the best one I've ever bought. I've bought a few in the past, they fell apart. This one I've had probably for three or four years, it's a tank. This thing is built super well. And I really like a couple features about this. First off, it connects over USB 3.0, which is great, um, which a lot of them do. This allows you to go ahead and transfer data. However, what I probably use this for more is the cloning feature. This will do an offline clone of any drive over to another drive. And it's very fast and it's sector by sector, meaning you're not gonna lose any data during the process of that clone as long as the drives are healthy. Um, and it's definitely super efficient. And I absolutely love this product, but it's not the only thing I use for extracting drives these days because we're no longer just doing you know SATA drives. This would do you know two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. We're also starting to deal with a lot of NVMe. And as we deal with NVMe, which is basically the new standard, uh, we gotta have basically another way to connect that drive over to a USB port. The ones I basically use, I have a couple. I have one from Ugreen as well as one from Sabrent. And basically what they do is they give you an NVMe connection that terminates over to like a type C port, which you can then connect over to a computer. I use this for two different things. First off for extraction of data, just like I was explaining uh, with the drive dock but I also use this for um, when I'm doing clones. When I use like Cronus True Image, maybe I'm upgrading somebody's drive. I'll put the new drive in here, boot onto a Cronus True Image, and clone everything from their existing drive over to the brand new drive on here. And another example, this one is from Ugreen. You can kind of see how uh, the drive actually sits in there. It's a pretty little easy tool to use. They're pretty cheap as well, but I use them all the time and they're um, very easy to work with. When it comes to also data, you know, moving things around the shop, a tool you kind of have to have is fast storage, um, just because you know you need to sometimes move a quick program or you need to back up some files temporarily before moving it over to a customer's external drive. So I usually have a bunch of different uh, external SSDs I have lying around. Basically, I use them, wipe them uh, in between each customer. And this one that I like probably the most is the T7 Shield from Samsung. These are designed to be like ultra durable is great especially because i'm just kind of throwing them around as i go through the day now before we get to consumables let me tell you one more product or tool that i've been using a ton lately and it's been probably one of my favorites and that happens to be this data vac this is basically a high powered air blower and it's able to clean out so much dust out of pcs and it's super efficient at doing it and i absolutely love this thing i bought it probably in 2022 probably the end of 2022 and since then this thing's cleaned hundreds of PCs. It is way more efficient than something like canned air, and it's actually way more powerful. I switched from canned air while I was using a, um, an electric leaf blower, but that wasn't very efficient. The airstream is not condensed down, down enough, at least for my liking. So I switched over to this data back, haven't looked back since, use this item all the time. Highly recommend it, even though it is a little pricey but it's definitely an amazing item for maintenance on computer. Now, a couple of the consumable products that I use, um, basically these are products that you have to kind of have in your shop, super common, but basically they get used up and you, you, know, you don't reuse them all the time. So starting off with electrical tape, which is pretty self-explanatory. I pretty much just have this for any time I need to tape something down, tape something together inside a computer. I just need something that's gonna you know, not uh, fall apart because of heat or it's not gonna be, you know, cause any kind of elect, uh, conduction of electricity. So I can basically keep this always on hand uh, just in case I need it. And it's a pretty common occurrence I actually have to use. Consumable product I do use quite a bit are zip ties. 
And this is a kit I bought a couple years back and it's basically lasted me all the way until now. Um, but this is a kit of four, eight inch and 11 inch zip ties. This is probably one of your most common uses uh, for anytime you're working, especially on desktops um, or just cabling in general for IT. And um, I use the four and eight inch probably the most, especially when you're building computers. That's kind of the standard sizes. And then something like 11 inch is definitely gonna be for you know maybe larger cable groups um, or if you have some networking cables, throw those together uh, with something like that. So I just have this kit, this is pretty cheap. You can pick these up on you know places like Amazon, uh, relatively easy. Another two consumable products I use is isopropyl alcohol and shop towels. And the reason I use these so often is really just to remove thermal paste. Um, isopropyl alcohol is a great way to go ahead and break down old thermal paste. Um, and then basically the reason I use shop towels and not any kind of traditional paper towels is one, they don't, uh, the fibers in them are a little bit better. Uh, they don't scatter as much as some of, you know, uh, cheap paper towels and they're way more durable when it comes to um, both absorption as well as you know they don't tear as easy which is great when you're working in environments that are a little bit more sharp speaking of thermal paste the one i always have on hand is arctic mx6 and that really has to do with its great affordability this paste is really cheap and the performance is pretty good it keeps up with some of the best paste out there while being you know relatively inexpensive so i always have a few tubes of this always on hand Anytime I'm uh, swapping thermal paste, this is usually what I'm using, unless we're using some kind of specialty paste. That's all the tools you probably see on my desk, but there's one more that's probably more important to me than anything, and that's this repair mat I've been working on. This is the Modmatic Stream from ModWrite, and I've been using it for years, and I absolutely love it. It's held up to pretty much everything I've thrown at it, including dry ice, liquid nitrogen, tons of thermal paste, isopropyl alcohol, um, liquid coolant, Anything I've thrown at it, it's held up well. Um, it is starting to wear finally after having it for, you know, that six or seven years that I've owned it. And um, I absolutely love it. And it's showing its age also with some of the diagrams that are starting to get old. But I absolutely love having all the wiring diagrams. It makes a great background for videos as well. Um, and it's anti-static, which is just kind of gives you a little bit more peace of mind when working on computers. So the mat is definitely one of my favorite products and it's definitely near and dear to my heart, but I probably will be swapping that out soon. With that said, if there are any tools you feel like I left out that I definitely should pick up, let me know in the comments down below because I'd really appreciate that. And outside of that, the reason I made this video was really because when I got in IT, there weren't a lot of people talking about the tools that, of, you know, that people are using. And a lot of these I had to find over time and you know, I picked up quite a few, um, way more than this, a full you know, uh, tool chest full and actually way more than that at this point. But that's kind of wanted to share it with you guys because it's gonna allow, if anybody's looking to get into IT or looking for additional tools they might be able to pick up, these are some great options. And these are options you know, that I have highly recommended to tons of people that have asked me in the past, and I hope they're able to help you guys out. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe. And check out our most recent video where we actually just built a custom laptop cooler using Noctua fans. It was actually a pretty cool video, so go ahead and check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.